Welcome. Howdy, club members. Um, my name is Jacint. This is my coworker and colleague, Cougar. And we're here to introduce this month's club lineup for the six and three bottle club members, as well as the Swan members. Um, and as you can see, we have a lovely selection here. Yeah, and um, I'm going to have to bear with us as we go here. So I think for both of us, it's been a little while since we've done a tasting. Um, <laughs> so video tastings are also somewhat new to us, but uh, talking about cider sure isn't. So Certainly. And we've got, I mean, another spectacular lineup here, which I'm very excited about because there's a couple things I have not tried before and me then too. a couple of other ciders that are um, old favorites for me. Yeah, and those who have been club members for a while, you can probably already see that we have two new things in here, uh, new in bottles for this membership that are exclusively to be sold to club members. So mm -hmm. start getting excited. And a few of these are um, sort of going to be joining the Fin River lineup from mm -hmm. here on. Uh, in particular, this, this first one, the Sojourn, uh, represents the, the sort of increased number of connections that Fin River is forming with other local growers of heirloom cider apples. Uh, and so as we connect with these other orchards, uh, we wanted a way to uh, do a cider that could kind of feature different estate in their apples. And um, sometimes this sojourn will come from a specific grower, uh, like the Vista Ridge Orchard. Uh, other times it might feature apples that we've grown on site, as in this bottle, which is a blend of our sharp, uh, higher acid cider apples, apples like the Golden Russet, uh, apples like uh, Carmen de Sonneville, uh, which is one of my, my favorites. I love those really tart Ash, ash meets kernel, too. Oh, yeah. One of the few I like eating. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, these are really lovely apples. Uh, in fact, uh, the golden russet apples are such a good cider apple that um, you know, we, we will often source them from other orchards because they're, they're a really delightful apple that just brings a lot to the table. Um, and this one, I think the, the goal for Andrew was to really show off what those apples can do and to create a very elegant uh, kind of champagne white wine inspired cider. Um, a lot of you have probably heard us talk about bottle conditioning, which is essentially uh, letting a cider mature long enough that the naturally produced carbonation from the yeast is um, integrated into the cider over a long period to so get that very fine, very delicate mousse uh, the effervescence, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of what we mean when we say champagne style. Uh, this one, Andrew actually allowed uh, the fermentation to, to happen in, in three different separate batches. So he was using different yeast to bring out the best flavors from each apple and then blending it all together and letting that age and mature for eight months uh, to give it that champagne finish. Oof. You can hear it. I love that sound. Lovely. You'll often hear our cider maker talk about like the, um, the range of uh, sensations that he wants to kind of, uh, you know, the, the artistry, I guess, is he's trying to intend for an experience that starts with the moment you lay hands on the bottle. I mean, there's the visual experience of seeing it. There's the tactile experience as you crank open this wine cork and hurt your fingers a and little the bit. Cage too. Yeah. The auditory experience when it opens up. Um, and and then, look at the bubble on that oh, too. Gosh, yeah, it's it's delightful. If you need to get a good bubbly shot, that that cider is just beautiful. And you know, a lot of aged ciders I find tend to turn darker, especially when you use things like oak, but this one just remains that lovely, crisp, clear, golden color. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right off the bat. It's really, really light and crisp, but you do get that really well-rounded acid profile that comes through right up front. And it's followed by that lovely kind of tannic and bubbly finish. It's interesting because the, the effervescence being so strong compared to the golden or to, compared to the golden russet, it's like uh, it almost makes it feel lighter. Definitely, yeah. It, it has more of that. It's sort of like it dances around on your palate a little bit. So totally, it is kind of uplifting. Um, wow, I really love how how developed the aroma is of this mm -hmm. one too. It's you know, you can definitely tell that there's high acid apples because you, you get this very very botanical fruity. Um, Botanical's the wrong word, but very um, floral note. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I often find that I, I get hints of almost like honey or beeswax or something. There's definitely totally. like that, that sort of like pollen aroma. And it still references that kind of 
bright white wine feel as well. Like you can definitely tell there's a nice acidity to it. It's got a nice fermentation and it doesn't come off as something fruity or over sweetened. You know, you smell it and you're like, wow, that kind of just reminds me of a white wine. Yeah, yeah, really, really delightful white wine. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking at the, the sort of food pairing suggestions and this one was, was mentioned as being like an excellent um, charcuterie style cider, you know, something to go with your uh, cured meats, your cheeses, your... Um, totally. You know, the salted almonds and... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think this would definitely. Yeah. yeah. And what's nice about the lighter ciders like this is it's something that I can pair either with a lighter dish or a heavier dish. I find something that's so full-bodied and so rich, I have a hard time pairing it with food that's also very full-bodied and rich because you just get lost in everything that's going on. Absolutely. Um, but this one just yeah. seems like it's very well-rounded. I also love how, um, how much fruit flavor you get from a cider like this because it really doesn't need a lot of sweetness, but you still get this... Uh, really, really fruity, really flavorful burst mm -hmm. of um, apple kind of right up front. And totally. then it, you know, there's just that little bit of lingering uh, astringent bitterness and the effervescence that it kind of lasts for a minute or two. Uh, Man, I could keep yeah. drinking and talking about this one all day. Yeah, definitely. We should probably <laughs> move on though because we have several more ciders to try. Uh, and it's, it's true, this one could, you know, it definitely deserves uh, a long, appreciative, uh, exposure to it, but no, oh, we got to carry on. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah, here's a toast to the the orchard and the harvest. That Absolutely, we got this is really delightful. Uh, moving on down the line, um, this is a, an old favorite. Uh, Finriver, we were fortunate enough to uh, inherit a recipe for oak aged ciders from uh, kind of our our orchard progenitor. Um, uh, Zimmerman, uh, Drew Zimmerman. Drew Zimmerman, yep. And um, he kind of got our cider maker going with the oak-aged ciders, uh, starting with our fire barrel. Which is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been about 10 years now that Finn River's been doing oak-aged ciders. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, a decade of experience for our cider maker in, uh, you know, getting to use these different oak barrels from local uh, distillers. Um, to really add complexity and layer to the ciders. Um, most of the time for the oak and apple, we are using uh, whiskey barrels from either Woodenville Whiskey in Washington, uh, so these are actually Washington rye whiskeys, or from High West Distillers out in Park City, Utah. Um, this one also uh, is a blend of organic Washington apples. And I know it's, it's definitely easy to kind of take apples for granted sometimes, being from Washington. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm so used to all of these interesting heirloom cider varieties that, you know, I'll often like pass over the Fuji or the Gala or right. in the store, but. Well, lots of complex sugars, lots of fun tannins in those, and it's kind of something we're not necessarily pulling out of the apples in this cider. So it's gonna drink a lot brighter and a lot Definitely. more crisp than something like the Heart of Gold, for example. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cleaner, more simpler apple profile. Um, Mm, but there's I mean, just you like, get the oak right up top, absolutely. right on the smell, yeah. It's almost like a really soft vanilla, and it just has this real subtle sharpness, so you can tell that there's something else in there. I love oaked ciders. I've definitely grown to appreciate um, just that extra level of, of complexity that sort of, to me, can always or almost have a, a buttery quality to it sometimes. Yeah, totally. So it's a, a lovely cider just to sip on its own, you know. Gosh. And you know, immediately you, you can tell the difference between that forced carbonation and the bottle conditioning of the Heart of Gold right before this. It's much softer on the effervescence, but there's nothing lost there. You have that crazy vanilla aroma and flavor that comes up top, a little bit of the apple sharpness and sweetness, and then it just finishes bright and clean. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ciders to, um, you know, a couple times I've brought home Keg of Finn River for a larger event, and haven't had many events recently, but no, this would be a go-to cider for me. It's just such a lovely cider on its own. Yeah, the vanilla aroma really does linger on the out-breath, too. Like, after you swallow, mm -hmm. you breathe out, you breathe in, you still get a sense of that kind of oaked vanilla essence, which is floating around in the cider. Definitely. This was, um, this one's very evocative of fall for me, too. I mean, I definitely see it as an all-season cider. Mm -hmm. Lovely in the summer, lovely sipping on its own. But uh, because there's, there's more flavor to it, I think, you know, you, this one would be lovely with the braised cabbage and bratwursts or totally you know it's something it can stand up to a little little hardier fare um, yeah definitely a classic one of my favorites 
And another dry cider. Uh, as per usual, we're kind of starting dry and then going a little bit sweeter as we go down this lineup. And you know, I, I find that that's a, a good way to introduce a cider, because basically, when you start introducing sugars, they last on your palate a lot longer. Um, so by going from dry to sweet, uh, you won't overwhelm your previous flavors. Absolutely. Uh, save dessert for last. <laughs> I don't think I've ever liked this one as much as I do right now, talking about it and just kind of experiencing mm -hmm. it. It's, it's not something I drink all the time, but there's definitely a time and a place for this cider. It's, it's very lovely. Yeah. Mm. Definitely a favorite for me. Um, this is another fun one. Fresh Hopped is a cider that we've been doing uh, kind of as a special summer release for uh, four or five years now, yeah, something like that. Yeah, kind of in the same vein as our seasonals, right, where we're pulling these fresh ingredients and putting them right into a cider. A lot of our club members and, and locals are very familiar with the dry hop cider, which is something we typically sell year round. Um, but the main difference is we're not drying um, those hops. We're just putting them straight into the cider as fresh as we can once we get them, capturing as many of those essential oils and aromas as we can. And this one actually uh, started as a bit of a, a hobby project by one of our uh, farm interns who decided to grow some hops. <laughs> and then we had this, this source of, of hops to uh, harvest and put right into the cider. Uh, so for a few years, this was being produced on site. Um, but you know, in order to, to make a larger batch of it, uh, to feature some different hops, we actually connected with another uh, hops grower over in Squim. Um, I do not remember the name of the farm. but. I just read about it I did to do, prepare yeah. for this. <laughs> Anyone who wants to know what the source of these hops, uh, they're right from Squim. Uh, we have some information about that. Uh, I'm not going to try to hunt for it at the moment. Um, but this is Cascade, Zeus, and uh, one other type of hops. Mosaic. Mosaic hops? Yeah, I think so. Um, which is interesting because didn't in the past we usually just use Cascade hops. So it's kind of fun. It feels like as we've kind of been requested more and more to produce this more often, we're finally putting it in a bottle, and it's cool to be featuring other types of hops. I feel like in just in the greater Northwest, you see a lot of hoppy beers, a lot of IPAs, but a lot of the focus is on those Cascade hops, that local strain. For sure. So it's really cool yeah. to feature other kinds. One of the things that, that really sets this apart from an IPA for me, though, is... Um, God, it smells like an IPA, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it's lo yeah, I love the, the hop smell. Um, it's, it's so different, though, because it's, it's not cooked at all. It's not uh, dried. So the, it's a very unadulterated hop flavor. It's very fresh and floral. And you get uh, that in the scent profile, too. Like, you, you definitely smell the very fresh, bright hops. It's like it, I grow hops in my backyard, and if I'm to pull them off the vine and just squeeze them, it smells very similar to this. Yeah, it's, it's very intriguing. Like, there's, there's a lot going on in the nose of this one. Wow. Mm. Yeah, oh, again, just talking oh, yeah. about such a bright, like crisp flavor. Uh, and a yeah. little bit tart, too, like immediately gets me salivating. Yeah, at the um, end, definitely, this tartness kind of shines through after you feel all that floral, uh, those floral aromas kind of bouncing around your palate. Wow, yeah, interesting. Not a lot of sweetness, though. Yep, there's quite a lot, dry. There's a lot of flavor, but it's not a lot of sweetness. You know, I think, um, and definitely, some of the, the sugars in that are um, sort of hidden in the, the flavors of the hops. Uh, but yeah, it has a very, very citrusy, very bright, very zesty flavor to it. Uh, wow. This one, you know, another thing that's cool about this is for a few years now, we've really only been able to provide it on site. Uh, and I think this is the first time we've bottled this cider in about three years. So being able to take home some fresh topped is definitely um, yeah. uh, an exciting uh, opportunity. Yeah. It's, it's not, not, to finish, not to mention the, the fun new label we have for the bottle as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of half the fun working here is seeing the new labels that folks come up with and how we present the cider and the different local artists we use to showcase our ciders is, is very fun. And this one's kind of a throwback, right? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. It is kind of a throwback. That's one of our more, like, I would say one of our more classic or traditional logos, that apple. Um, is that, I think that's the same apple we feature on some of our clothing as well as uh, like the Solace bottles and things like that. So it's fun to revisit some of that artwork. Absolutely. And this uh, one has definitely had a cult following for quite some time. Totally. Uh, the hop cider is, uh, you know, it's a favorite for hops fans. Totally. And, you know, for um, me, uh, as somebody who can't drink beer anymore, like I love being able to have a hop cider. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because it's you know it's a flavor profile that I otherwise don't get to appreciate that often. T totally, and as a tasting host too, you get a lot of folks that come in and they're like, "Hey, do you have any beer?" You know, so the <laughs> the first thing I get to say is, "Well, you know, we don't make any beer." That being said, we do make some fun ciders with hops, and let mm -hmm. me show you this. And and the fresh hopped and the dry hopped tend to draw more of our beer drinkers in. Again, you're looking at a lot less sugar, a lot of those bright floral notes, a little bit of that bitterness that comes off. Um, with this one, the acidity is totally throwing me off. I wasn't expecting the tartness at the end, but I, I really okay. quite like it. It's so punchy. It's yeah. so bright. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's a really fun cider. Um, yeah. I mean, this would stand up with like a burger. I hate to, I, that <laughs> sounds like such a classic American suggestion, but it's just a little, lovely, light, bright profile. And I would love, I love to drink an IPA alongside a great burger. I feel like this would satisfy that same realm for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, even a bratwurst would be wonderful. Yeah. The, one of the, the tasting suggestions I heard for this one was like sweet potato fries or, mm. you know, I think that would be... Like pub food, kind yeah, of in that same vein. Bro. A little bit mm -hmm. greasier, a little bit fried. Mm -hmm. um, the acidity definitely cuts through any of the kind of fats that you would find in some of those meals, so it does stand up very well. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very uplifting, very bright flavor. Um, really delightful. So first off here, uh, this is a really... Exciting one. Uh, neither of us have ever tried this before. Correct. Um, we, for some time now, have uh, had relationships with uh, some local uh, lavender farms, uh, in particular Wilderby, right here in Port Townsend. And we've been doing lavender-infused ciders. Uh, this is the first time we've done a lavender cider without uh, black currant, mm -hmm. um, which is a really fun, lovely combo. You know, our black currant lavender cider is uh, hugely popular. Uh, but this time we wanted to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, this is the, the purple stave, which is an oak aged lavender infused cider. Wow, look at the color on that. It almost has that soft hue. You know, funny, coming mm -hmm. out of the bottle, I thought I saw a hint of purple. I think my brain just wanted to see it, but wow. it's definitely, it looks delicate. Ooh, it's a little I can, hazier. I can get the lavender right away. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I love about the oh, yeah. the Royal Velvet Lavender, which um, is the variety that we, we usually use, I'd have to fact check that this is in fact Royal Velvet, mm -hmm. uh, but the culinary lavenders are definitely less um, overpoweringly aromatic, and more subtle, more mm -hmm. velvety, uh, a little more of a rich undertone, it's probably why they call it Royal yeah. Velvet. Well, and over, like, the very aromatic lavenders have tons and tons of those oils which produce those aromas, which can lend it to a very soapy flavor which is something you definitely want to avoid when you're eating or consuming lavender. Um, so sticking with the culinary varieties really helps keep people who are wow. mostly afraid of lavender <laughs> interested in, oh, yeah. in drinking it. It's a really approachable lavender. It's really subtle, rich. I mean, I get it um, very Gosh. aromatic lavender qualities, but um, you know, on the palate, it, it's much more subtle. And it's well, even in the scent really profile too, you can pick up on the, the oak barrel, that lovely kind of vanilla softness partnered with the um, with the lavender. Yeah, I like this. It's intriguing. It's it's complex. It's got a lot going on. Hmm. Whoa. This, yeah. Wow. I like it a lot. So it's, it's like lovely cider. lavender right up front, and then you get this great vanilla wave, that really soft kind of oak barrel aging influence. And then I feel the tartness just on the sides of my mouth here. You can kind of feel it seeping in by your tongue. And then lovely clean oh, yeah. finish. There's not a, not a huge linger on this. And um, you know, I think it's worth noting that uh, all of these crew cider selections are uh, limited special release. Um, so it's, it's definitely worth uh, getting a few of these when you can uh, because they're here and gone mm -hmm. often. Uh, anytime you do bring home one of these crew selection bottles, you're of course supporting our crew uh, with a little bit of, um, it's like a 10 cents on the bottle or something goes into a bonus check for them or a dollar a bottle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really great way to thank our cider makers for their amazing artistry. Yeah, well, and it gives them room to play with inspirations. And a lot of us here are friends with other local farms. We're friends with other folks who maybe just grow things at home. So the fun thing about the, the crew selections is, I mean, sometimes we just get a random ingredient dropped on the doorstep and they're like, hey, we can't use this, do something with it. And we'll do a small 100 gallon batch of cider that you may never see again. So just playing with those kind of unique availability, seasonal availability of crops and working with our, our friends and family mm -hmm. to kind of come together on fun small batches. You know, it's, yeah. it's gotta be pretty fun. As, I'm not, I don't work in production, but as someone who works there, I can imagine this is a great creative outlet to really share what you're learning in the production facility. Mm -hmm. The flavor on this is incredible. Like, I, yeah, this I is it. amazing. I don't know what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't this. It has that same 
slight tart but softness of the oak and apple and this lovely rich floral lavender that just dances around the entire time and it's right up front and when you swallow it's on the out breath as well you know you kind of get the fluidity of the 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 oak and the vanilla coming later but the lavender stays there the whole time yeah this delightful. is yep. swiftly becoming a new favorite of mine um all right next one we have is definitely a classic uh this is part of our orchard series ciders featuring fruit uh from finn river and from local sources uh, this one is a blend of um, oak-aged blackcurrant wine with uh, organic apples. Mm -hmm. um, and the you know, blackcurrant is something that, that just packs so much of a punch. It's got a lot of acidity. It's very bright and fruity. Uh, blackcurrant cider has quickly become one of you know, our uh, very popular ingredients. And the black oak is just a way to, to give it a little bit more depth and complexity. Uh, you know, the, the oak aging brings all of those notes we've been talking about, Absolutely. the buttery, the caramel, the vanilla. Uh, when I like to, when I speak with club members here, I, I like to talk about this one as being kind of like our Finn River take on our contemporary black currant cider that we sell year round, you know, using, mm -hmm. um, that one uses apples from the Eastern side. And this is kind of like, well, how can we approach the same realm using heirloom cider apples with a lot more complex sugars and lots more tannins and acids playing around? Um, and why not ferment that black currant juice into a wine to kind oh, yeah. of back it up? It's, it's got that, yeah, right off the bat, you can tell black currant for sure. It's very, very fruit forward on the nose. Yeah. Overall, the scent profile isn't terribly strong, though. But you're right, Ooh. it just picks right up with black currant. Oh yeah, yeah, and you can feel that the the acids from the black Ooh. currant definitely uh, kind of move around the mouth. Like you can feel sort of the sharpness mm -hmm. in the back of your cheeks, up on the front of your tongue. Yeah, it, it definitely follows how you swallow. I mean, it's like sharp right up front, all the way to the back of your tongue. You get that lovely. It's almost like a velvety, or I hesitate to say oily acidity, but the black currant wine really does bring that volume and that that body to the drink. And then you, when you do swallow, you get those lovely kind of apple tannins that really just dance around on your tongue. Yeah, this is, this is killer, complex. Um, wow. It's definitely, you know, I think uh, when we talk about food pairings, uh, you know, our, our cider maker has suggested this one along with grilled oysters, along with uh, white fish, uh, because it, yeah. it packs so much flavor that it, you know, I think it could overwhelm mm -hmm. uh, or clash with something that Absolutely. was also strong flavored. So it, it would go really lovely with something light, some seafood, salty. Even like uh, a, a great fresh salad with like some pomegranate seeds on it, you know, just to kind of balance the, the fruitiness for a nice spring salad. This would be a lovely addition. Mm. Yeah, I love that, that tannic quality, the little bit of bitter, the little, mm. little edginess of this cider. It's definitely, you know, bold and present. But it's not overpowering. Mm -mm. You're right, so right when you swallow, the tannins are slow to follow. They really, they wait a little bit. You get that kind of, um, it's not like a numbness, but you get that kind of fuzziness on your tongue from the tannins, and it kind of slowly fades from your taste buds. Yeah, I can see what you're saying about, this is very evocative of pomegranate, kind of that sharpness. That Absolutely. A little bit bitter, but. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Wow. Mm. I mean, sharp, bright, and fruity is definitely um, some connective themes to this next one as well. This is the Cranberry Rosehip Cider. Yeah. Um, another one that's just a, represents a really, really um, incredible and fun relationship. Uh, for a long time, we've been sourcing organic cranberries from Starvation mm -hmm. Alley in Washington. And um, it's, it's quite a sight to behold, seeing a, a you know, 800 pound pallet of cranberries being squeezed into <laughs> this like rich, ruby red, intense, fresh cranberry juice, which then gets blended into the cider. Uh, and the, the Nootka rose, also the wild, locally harvested rose hips. So it's, it's a, a beautiful fusion of some uh, really vivacious local fruits, just that intense, lovely flavor mm -hmm. uh, with the cranberry tart bright uh, very very uh, upfront mm -hmm. and then that rose hip giving it a little bit more of a, the delicate lingering herbaceous undertone well and the rose hip definitely does complement kind of the subtle bitterness you find in a cranberry the rose hip kind of brings it to fruition and you get the whole flavor you get the lovely tartness a nice kind of bitter sheen as well 
Um, I love these seasonal botanicals. They're, they really are a reflection of our roots, um, starting with organic farming and seasonal availability of crops. And it's really a great way for us to partner with other farms um, and other locally harvested food and just really you know, showcase these in the seasons that these green ingredients are available and then um, kind of not make them available again until the, the plants are ready to produce once more. It's, oh, yeah. You know, it's really fun having that seasonal availability. I'm, I'm very partial to having cranberry juice on hikes. So this one typically comes out in November when hiking season slows down. I tend to buy a case and throw it on the shelf and wait till summer. So I might be a weird guy for that, but. Yeah, to each their own. I mean, I, I definitely see this as, um, you know, a, a lovely winter cider. Uh, it just has yeah. that, you know, that really bright, really uplifting flavor that kind of brings me back to, um, you know, a, a cheerful, uh, cozy mind state. And, you know, I think it's, a, oh, it's an easy suggestion, but this alongside your typical holiday, holiday fare right. is an obvious food pairing choice. It just tastes like Thanksgiving. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the acidity, the brightness, mm -hmm. uh, it could really, really cut through rich gravies or, um, you know, anything that's sort of like your hearty soul food totally. for winter. It has that light, rich, that nice, rich flavor, but it's not, um, it's not something that coats your palate. You know, I always go back and forth with food pairings. When something is like really rich, but it lingers, I kind of hesitate to pair it with heartier foods. But this is, you're right, this is something that could really stand up, um, especially with like a nice white meat, some cracked pepper would be a great addition. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's, you, it's a good one for the fans of uh, more fruit forward, more, um, you know, it's a, a subtly sweet cider. It's definitely not overpowering. Absolutely. But um, very fruity. It'd be delightful to play around with this in some mm -hmm. cider cocktails or... Yeah. Um, you know, just to, to pair it with uh, foods where you want something a little more tart, a little bright, a little fruity. Sure. And if you do find yourself in the woods in the winter, it's got a lovely, you know, not too intense, but a lovely sugar content to really bolster <laughs> yourself and get you back to the car, so to speak. Um, wow. It's yeah. got, I just love that color. All right. Well, um, we tried not to ramble on too long, but it's hard to do when you're trying something that's, that's so delicious and you know, worth talking about. Yeah. Uh, so thank you all for uh, giving us the time of day to listen to our, our cider musings. And uh, I hope you enjoy your club selection because this is a really lovely lineup. And um, as always, we're incredibly grateful to uh, have the ongoing support of our uh, cider club members. So We look forward to seeing you on the farm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing the love. Cheers. Cheers, bud. <laughs>